Hey everybody, this is David Temple, Managing Editor of TechRass, and today I'm going to show you how to install a RetroSheet baseball database on your Mac. We've had some articles about building RetroSheet databases on TechRass in the past, but they've only dealt with Windows machines because the tools that we use uh, to generate those databases are Windows only programs. They run in the command line of, of Windows machines. So for the Mac, we have to kind of do a cheater way around that where basically I've uh, taken it on the Windows side, built the database, and then recompressed it down to one single uh, SQL file that we can then load onto our Mac. Uh, if you are a Windows person and you had maybe a little trouble following along with parts one and two or something didn't work out for you, you got some errors that you didn't understand or something like that, you can also use this video uh, to get a retro sheet database on your Windows machine. The screens will look slightly different, but all in all, it's pretty much the same process. So as you can see, I've already downloaded the zip file right here. So let's just go ahead and open that up. So we'll, we'll expand this or unzip it if you're on a, on a PC. And basically all it's going to give us is one big .sql file. And there we go. And of course it puts it right behind. So this is the whole file. This is all the retro sheet data that we have up through 2014. It's not just for 2014, it's up through 2014. So basically everything we have from I think 1952 is when uh, the retro sheet data starts. So uh, the first thing we have to do is actually install a SQL server onto our machine. You think server, you think some remote big giant computer somewhere, but actually you can install instances of servers on your local computer. And that's what we're going to have to do to get this up and running here. So let's just open a web browser. And you're going to find MySQL Community Server. Uh, so this is the server program. The community part means it's free. It's open source. Uh, so you can load it on your own machine. So it's always the first one that comes up in Google, at least for me. Uh, this is what the page should look like. Download MySQL Community Server. And it already selects your OS for you. The one you're going to want is this DMG archive. That has the actual uh, package installer that we need. And I'm on uh, Mac 10.9. This is actually a, a brand new Mac Mini that I got uh, to replace my, my aging home server. So... Uh, I actually need this database up on my Mac to do my querying and stuff that I use because I, I do a slightly different way. Uh, but we'll get into that later. So uh, so find your OS, either 10.8 or 10.9. If you are on Windows, it'll probably, or it should, automatically select Microsoft Windows. Uh, if you're on an older version of Mac OS, it should automatically detect which version you're on. So anyway, but the ma main point is we want the DMG archive. So go ahead and download that, which I've actually already done to save you watching uh, me download things because that's super fun. So there we go. So just go ahead and open that up. And it's a package installer, so we'll just run it. Now, if you're on Windows, it's going to look slightly different uh, from here on out. The Windows installer uh, that, again, uh, we mentioned in, I think, part one of uh, the TechRAS series on, on RetroSheet databases walks you through a little bit more of the setup. Uh, the Windows side walks you through a little bit more of the setup than the Mac side does. So uh, if you are on a PC, make sure to reference part one of our uh, RetroSheet series, which should be linked in the accompanying article here. And then uh, and then you should be able to understand kind of how that, how that setup goes. We're gonna have to do a slightly different thing on a Mac here. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, click continue here. And then this is the agreement. So we'll just go ahead and agree. Keep the uh, install on Mac HD, that's fine. We'll go ahead and install. So again, on the Windows side, after this is done, there will be some more screens that you'll have to set up. Basically setting up what's known as the root user. Uh, but we can't uh, do that, or the, the installer on the Mac doesn't do that for us, so we have to get a little bit more technical. So let's go ahead. Uh, the, the actual software is installed, so we can just go ahead and click Close. 
and we'll close all this stuff for now. And then the next thing we need to do is actually uh, set up the database through a little bit of terminal work. Okay, so now that we've installed SQL Server on our Mac, we're gonna need to do a little bit of setup. Uh, again, on the Windows side, this is done within the, the package installer, but on the Mac, we're gonna have to do a little bit of work through terminal. Basically, all we have to do is set up our root user. The root user is kind of like the super user of, of a database. It has all the rights to create tables and, and query tables and basically do anything you can do uh, inside SQL. So all we have to do is basically set that up and that will uh, allow us uh, or give us a username and password that we can use to query our database. So the first thing we actually have to do is go into our system preferences and actually start the MySQL service. So you should find it down in here. Let's go ahead and click on it and you can see that the MySQL server instance has stopped. So we just want to go ahead and click start. To start it, it does make you enter your password. There. So now it's running. You can set to automatically start it, uh, start the SQL Server on on startup of your machine. That's a personal preference. Uh, if you don't do that, you're going to have to make sure that you remember to go in here and, and start it uh, before you want to do any work inside the database. So now our SQL Server is running. So let's go ahead and go to Terminal. And this is our basic terminal window. It's a little bit like the command prompt on Windows. You can see our machine name here. Mine's called Griffey. I name all my uh, electronics after baseball players. And then it'll have your user listed here. So the first thing we want to do is just change our directory, get into a different folder. So the first line of code we want to get, this will be on the accompanying article as well. We just want to copy that and paste that into here. So basically this is just changing directory. That's what CD stands for. And we're just going in this very specific bin folder. So go ahead and paste that in and hit enter. And it doesn't look like anything happened, but you can actually see that we are now in the bin folder. So now we're in the now we're where we want to be to run the second command. Second command is down here. Again, this will be on the article. I just have it on a sticky note uh, for reference. You can also put it on a sticky note, however you want to remember it. So this is a command to basically uh, change the user dash u. Uh, we're changing the password of the user root. It kind of goes backwards here, but we're changing the password of the root user. And uh, by default, at least this command it said as password, I put, I'm, I'm gonna actually change it. It doesn't matter what you put in here. Sometimes when I set things, when I set passwords as password, I have a harder time remembering it than if I set it as something else. So this is a baseball database, so I'm gonna set the password to baseball. Uh, the password is going to be whatever are between these two single quotes. So it can be baseball, it can be password, it can be, you know, your dog's name, uh, whatever you want. Uh, the main thing is that you don't forget it. So probably write this down somewhere, save it um, on a sticky, save it if you use Evernote or, or save it in even a Google Doc. Uh, just make sure you don't lose this because uh, there's really no way, no easy way for sure to uh, get this password back. There's no easy password recovery. Uh, for this. So whatever you set it to, just make sure that you remember it or write it down. Probably both. Both would be a good thing to do. So once we have it set, you just go ahead and hit enter. And then it gives you a warning saying that changing the password in the command line isn't maybe a great idea. And that's usually the case. But again, this is just for personal use, so it's not a big deal. So now we've set up our root user and our password. So we're all done. We can close terminal here. And now our SQL Server is uh, totally set up for the most part. Uh, all we need to do is get a client that we can use to query the database. So on parts one and two of our RetroSheet series, uh, again, dealing specifically with the Windows side, uh, the client that I recommended uh, was the MySQL Workbench that basically came as part of the MySQL package. And they do have a version of that for Mac, uh, and it works pretty well. Uh, I just prefer a different client. Uh, I think it, uh, this client uh, looks a little better and, and I like the design of it a little bit more. Uh, it's called uh, SQL Pro. So you can find that by, you have to actually spell out the word SQL, which doesn't really make sense as far as the acronym. But um, anyway, just go ahead and, and, and search for SQL Pro or you can go to SQLPro.com. And this is what we want, so just go ahead and click download here. 
Uh, again, I've already done that to save on time. So I'll just go to my downloads folder here. And uh, we'll just open up SQL Pro. And this is an, an installer, it's just a copy of the program. So you just, uh, you can right click on it and click copy. And then you just paste it into your, oh yeah, I have to do this here. So let's just paste it into your applications folder. Um, I already have it in there, so I'm not gonna actually do that, but you just wanna paste it in your applications folder. And uh, once you have that, Go ahead and open up, uh, there he is, SQL Pro. So I've already kind of set this up. Let's actually, um, let's actually remove this and start over just so you can see how I set this up. So this is the first thing we have to do is actually select our uh, database. So we don't have any connections yet to our database. So we have to, we have to set that up first. So I'm gonna call, uh, the name, I'm going to name this retro sheet. You can name it whatever you want. This is just uh, for your reference. And then the host, by default, is 127.0.0.1. That's basically the local host that connects just to your uh, internal machine. And then uh, the username is going to be root. And then the password is whatever we set up uh, as the password uh, previously in terminal. So once we uh, do that, let's go ahead and click and, uh, and add this to favorites, just so we don't have to re-enter this every time. And then it'll just show up on the, on the left-hand column here. So let's go ahead and click Connect, and now we're connected. Great. So now we're connected to our database, but we actually don't have any uh, real databases that we can connect, or we don't have a, a, a retro sheet database that we can connect to. So in the Database menu, let's go ahead and click Add Database. And we'll just call this database retro sheet. It's a little confusing because we named our connection retro sheet uh, the connection to the server, but then we're also uh, calling the database retro sheet. But I'm just doing that for for simplicity's sake. Um, we'll just keep it pretty straightforward. All right. So now that we have it, it's but there's nothing in here yet. So this is where this uh, SQL file over here comes in handy. So we will go to File and Import. Sorry, I had a brain freeze there all of a sudden. So navigate out to your desktop and make sure to choose the Retrosheet 2014.sql file. Go ahead and click Open. Now I'm going to uh, basically fast forward on the video for this because it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while for you. It just will. There's a whole lot of data on here. So go ahead uh, and click open, and then it's gonna start importing. You can see it's got about 5.7 gigs that it needs to import. So it's gonna take a while. Um, make sure if you're doing this on a laptop that your laptop is plugged in and set to not go to sleep. Um, you know, uh, Or the same, I guess, goes for a desktop. Just make sure that for the next, let's say, th 30 minutes, uh, your computer doesn't go to sleep, just so uh, we make sure that this process goes uninterrupted. So I'm going to pause the video now, and we'll see you on the other side after this uh, uh, SQL is done importing. Okay, so once the SQL file is done importing, you should see three tables on the left-hand side here, Event, Game, and Subs. Uh, if we click on the Content button here, you can actually see what's in these tables. Uh, so these are the all the events in the Events table, and then we have all our games, and then all of our substitutions. So we just want to make sure that these uh, tables have information in them. If they do, then everything was successful. You officially have a RetroSheet SQL database uh, on your Mac or your PC. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we will talk a bit about uh, what these columns mean, what these uh, fields uh, mean, and then how to use uh, SQL to properly query uh, these RetroSheet databases. Uh, but that's it for now. Make sure to check back to techgrass.com uh, for the next video in this series, and we'll see you then.